So we are talking all about dads and how they can be excellent support people during labor and birth. So we're giving five great tips for dads during labor and delivery. And if you're wondering why am I talking about this, clearly not a dad. It's because over the last 15 years as a birth doula, I have worked with dads, over 300 in fact, and I've seen the good, the bad, the excellent, and I want to share those tips with you. I've also focused my work over the last four years in preparing and educating new dads and partners to be. So I've created an online course that is specifically designed to prepare dads and partners for their role called Supporting Her. And if you want to find out more information, I'll put a link down below. So I am a true believer that dads play a vital role in labor and delivery. And with just a little bit of practice, preparation, and education, they can go from being a partner to an excellent partner. So that's why we're gonna dive into the first tip now. I'm glad you're here with me. Let's go. So I call this first tip, the man in the mirror. And it might be the hardest of our tips, so I'm gonna start there, because if you can master this, you're gonna go a long way in being an excellent partner. So what it means is really being a demonstration, a role model, a mirror to your partner in labor. Uh, going through a labor, there's a lot of strange things that happens. You know, let's start off with the breathing. You know, an effective method of breathing for pain management, for coping, for staying calm and relaxed, is that deep breath in and that deep breath out. And sometimes it looks a little strange and feels a little strange. So if dads, you can do the same kind of breathing if you can model that breathing for your partner it will make it so much easier for her to get the right breathing down so if you see her breathing really shallow breathing really fast paced and you just go and carry on with that long slow in and out breath it will help her visually see the breath that she can be doing to have more control over her pain, control over the situation and calm. Same thing with body language. If she's all hunched up like this and clenched, she's going to feel more pain. So instead of saying something like drop your shoulders or relax, if you just make the same body language and then just kind of shake it out, she can see you kind of shaking it out and she can follow that. Nonverbal communication is really powerful in labor because too much talking, too much conversation kind of messes with our mind when we're trying to give birth. So you as a partner can be a good model. Think of it as a mirror. Um, a lot of times people want to change positions in labor. And so maybe uh, a lunge, a kneel, uh, standing and leaning, a lot easier if they see their partner do it. So dads, you can lean up against the wall and show her a position maybe you learned about in childbirth class and she can see that and follow it, copy you. It's so much easier for her to be led with ideas than for her to think about herself what she should be doing. So man in the mirror might be the hardest one of these five tips, but if you can master this, it's going to be golden. Now I'm going to say this probably once, twice, maybe three times, but practicing these tips, practicing this one with your partner before labor starts is going to make it so much more effective when labor begins. So man in the mirror, first tip. Second tip is to be her number one cheerleader. Of course, right? That is such an important, valuable source of strength. When you look over, you're doing something hard and someone tells you you are doing an excellent job, that you are strong, that you can do it. And believe it or not, it can be a little bit hard to remember positive things to say and to stop saying negative things in labor. And I know this because I've seen it in action many times. I have seen dads, partners, grandmas, even nurses and, and doctors um, say things like, oh, you've been at this a long time, or you look really tired. These are not positives. This is not what the cheerleader says. The cheerleader says, you are strong. You've got this. So the hack that I like to teach is that if you can think of yourself as an actual cheerleader, like you're on the sidelines of a marathon and your partner's running by, or you're on the sidelines of a soccer match and she's playing, 
you are definitely not going to see her run by and say, you look really tired or is this hard or are you in pain? You never ask someone on a marathon if they're in pain. You just assume that they are in pain. So what do you say? You've got this. You've already done so much. You're getting there. Halfway there. You've got this. Um, the finish line is, is coming up. So being her cheerleader isn't necessarily as easy as it sounds, but it's so critical. It's so important. And just know that even if she has pain medication, like an epidural, and it does, she doesn't look as active or that she's really working as hard as she did prior to the epidural, she really is. So being a cheerleader means the entire time. It's also such a great tip for um, a cesarean births. Um, a surgery is hard, and so being there and saying you're doing a great job, even if it looks more passive, is still so comforting and really makes you an excellent partner. So, number one cheerleader. My third tip is where you can be creative and have fun, and it's still important and gonna be a great way to be supportive in labor and delivery, and that is to be the DJ. So music is powerful in labor and it can be something that changes the tone, changes the mood, um, gives you energy, keeps you calm, uh, muffles out noises of the hospital. It has so many benefits of labor and it can be fun too. So I suggest to make the most out of this tip is to meet with your partner beforehand and have fun setting up playlists for birth. I've seen people set up a calm and relaxing playlist, a uh, active playlist, maybe one that they would use to work out that they want to use uh, during pushing. I've seen a favorites, you know, just those songs that just uh, make her happy and things that she always likes to listen to and never gets tired of. So set up some playlists, use your favorite streaming apps, your Spotify, Apple Music, whatever works best for you and get some good equipment as every good DJ does. You can get an inexpensive uh, Bluetooth speaker to make playing the music in your home while you're laboring, to play it when you are in your birthing location, whether that's a hospital or a birth center, and have the continuity of having music as that coping mechanism, as that um, way to relax It's set up. Now partners, this really falls on you because she has a lot going on. She's not gonna remember hey, let me get my music set up. So one thing I want you to do is just try. So when you get to the hospital, you get situated uh, wherever you're giving birth, get the music out, get the speaker out, and go ahead and put on a playlist that you think she'll like. She can always say no. She can always say, play something else, or I'm tired of the song. But what I've seen so many times is dads forget they forget about music, they're waiting for their partner to say, hey, will you turn on the music? And that just doesn't happen. And so all that work and all that benefit of music doesn't really get realized. So be the DJ and just wait for her to ask for the music to be changed or request a song. And it is going to be powerful and help you be an excellent partner. Number three is be the DJ. Number four is all about hydration be the water boy. Hydration is so key for contractions, for labor. Dehydration can actually lead to funky labor patterns or labor stopping altogether. So her hydration should really be your responsibility. And maybe that sounds like too much, but I think it's pretty reasonable. Um, and it's doable, but it takes a little bit of strategy in order to keep someone hydrated who's in labor. So here we go have a bottle with a straw. So make sure it is super easy for her to drink whatever position she's in, whether she's lying down, standing up, sitting, quick, easy sips with a straw. You can vary the type of uh, liquids that you're giving her. You don't need to just do water. You can do a electrolyte drink, a Powerade, Gatorade, a hydrolyte, something like that. Um, and you can do something like coconut water as well. So make sure that you vary the type of hydration you're doing. Um, instead of saying, hey, do you want a sip of something or are you thirsty? Just take that bottle with the, uh, or cup with the straw, put it right next to her mouth and she can just sip it. 
So kind of think of like what you would see on the NBA, on M the sidelines of the NBA. You know, you see the trainers come out with those squirt bottles and they just hold it up so that they can squirt into the players' mouths. They're probably not saying, hey, do you want some water? They're just like, here, take some water. Um, that's your role. That is really the way to keep hydrated. So you really um, want to see her taking a couple sips between maybe every few contractions. So the way that you know whether or not you're staying hydrated, or she's staying hydrated, that is, is if she's taking several bathroom trips. So if bathroom trips are regular, then you're doing a good job. Also, hydrate yourself. So make sure you're drinking as well. And taking care of yourself is very important. So hydration for the both, both of you makes you a great partner. So number four is being the water boy. Last, but certainly not least, is being the snack vendor. So being the one to pack the snacks, give the snacks, also eat the snacks with your partner. It is all important. Snacking is key. So make sure that you sit down together, get a shopping list, talk about what snacks would be really great in labor. Did you know that this is something that a lot of people don't understand about labor is that you should be eating during labor. That there was good research that came out that said that eating during labor does help labor progress, helps full fuel you along. Now your hospital might have a policy that restricts eating during a certain point in labor, um, possibly with an epidural or any kind of drugs, um, possibly at a certain time of labor. So definitely check your hospital or wherever you're giving birth, their policy as well. But when you are laboring at home and any time before those policies come into effect, if they exist, eating is encouraged. Now, again, just like the water, don't say, hey, are you hungry? You're just gonna unwrap something and hand it to her. Unwrap a cheese stick, hand it to her. Open up a packet of uh, almond butter, hand it over. Um, have a couple options, she can choose from them. Uh, it's so much more effective to get someone to eat if they don't have to make the thought of what do I want to eat. If they see something, they can just pick it. And have just a couple bites, that's fine. Even if she has half of a cheese stick, that's still something. And that's still you providing a great snack and helping her in her labor and being an excellent partner. So make sure that you are having snacks as well. I have seen my share of dads who feel queasy after the baby's born because they haven't eaten for hours upon hours. So force yourself to eat some snacks along the way. You know, things that aren't smelly, that have protein, that have um, the carbs, things that are going to last and sustain you. Now this snack tip and the water tip are both really great tips for after the baby comes home too, because hydration is still gonna be important, especially if she's breastfeeding. Snacks, also very important, especially if she's breastfeeding. So if she sits down to feed the baby and has maybe a little table next to her or something like that somewhere close by, that you can put a bottle with a straw and some snacks, that is super key and you will be a great partner. Those are five labor and delivery tips for dads. Now, if you would like to see all of those tips and five extra ones put together in an easy to use ebook that you can actually download to your phone and have it handy when you are at the hospital or birth center, um, check out the links below because it is included in the Supporting Her course if you use our special link and that link also gives you 20% off too. So thanks for hanging out with me. Hope you learned something. I'd love to know in the comments below. As always, if you found this video interesting and helpful, subscribe to the channel. You'll find out if you hit the notification bell when we have a new video released and hit the like button, share it with a friend, all those things. Have a great day, guys. Talk to you later. Bye.